it is my prayer and blessing that you will succeed in fulfilling your destiny as priesthood holders of Almighty God and always be joyful bearers of his heavenly light. Travis Wingett's all. Proverbs chapter 22, verse 6. Train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. Mormons have believed that one of the prophets have said it. Not knowing that he quoted from Proverbs. <laughs> and so... Having been born and raised in the Covenant Mormon, many people believe that had my parents taught me correctly, I would not apostatize from the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. <clears throat> so are my parents to blame? Should my parents be locked up in prison for me? Mormons would say yes. And so, I know all about this. I was born and raised in the Covenant Mormon. I know this proverb. I am a witness of this proverb. And the manner in which my parents trained me resulted in my rebellion rather than my conforming and complying, like my siblings, except for Tiffany. <laughs> Tiffany was deceptive. She appeared to conform and comply, but she was always trying to manipulate and get her way. Still, last I heard, which was decades ago, she was still doing it. <clears throat> that was the way that she had been raised up as the middle child seeing her older brother oldest brother being able to get anything he wanted it was school it was required <laughs> i didn't get anything i wanted i told you guys about the uh, one christmas as a child in which my mom put out the uh, <clears throat> the Sears Christmas catalog and told us to go through and make a list of, of what we wanted for Christmas and she was expecting a few things she didn't tell us and and so uh, I had gone through it and, and had created my first publication <laughs> well second publication first publication was in kindergarten I composed my first book in kindergarten. How about that? Take that, Mozart. <laughs> my dad destroyed it, but nonetheless, that's part of the teaching of parenting given to me, for which I rebelled. But, uh, yeah, I composed several pages, single-spaced, of Christmas gifts from the catalog. And so Christmas time came along, and I didn't get a single thing on my Christmas list. I got crap. See, in modern times, kids don't get coal in their stocking anymore. You get socks and underwear. And so, yeah, that was my Christmas. My parents punished me for doing exactly what they told me to do. I obeyed, they punished me. That has been my training in the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. The Church orders me to study the Scriptures, 
I study the scriptures, and I'm punished for studying the scriptures. <laughs> because I did what they didn't want me to do. They didn't want the consequences. They just wanted me to go through the motions. Just do token stuff. <clears throat> and so this kind of abuse is why I rebelled. What good is it to conform and comply when all I'm going to do is get punished? And yeah, I, even Fiskin's fifth grade gave us a, a report to do on a state. I did it on Idaho. Nobody knew that Idaho existed. As a Southern Californian boy, and uh, and so yeah, I had full reign on that. Whereas other kids were arguing over who got New York and other popular places. Na 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 na. I got Idaho. <laughs> What's Idaho? <laughs> Only the best potatoes in the universe because of the molten lava. And uh, and so I spent days working on this report. I had insider information from my grandmother lived in Rexburg, and so yeah, I, it was going to be awesomest. And I had a, a typewriter back then. I knew how to. Oh. Interesting. I had a typewriter before I took typing class in seventh grade. Fascinating. Anyway. <laughs> Take that, Mozart. <laughs> and, and had it all done up all nice and neat. And, and uh, submitted it. And then some days later, I don't know how long it took for her to finish them and give them back to us. I get mine and I'm expecting an A as usual. F. It crushed me. All that work. All that conforming and complaining. And she failed me. That's been my life. And yeah, my parents uh, were furious with the teacher and had a, a big old meeting of which I had to sit outside the classroom for a long time as I could hear yelling in the classroom. <laughs> and eventually uh, it was changed so that I got a C minus. Doesn't matter, damage was done. And so, when you realize that the manner in which you train a child will affect them for the rest of your life, you realize the value and importance of being a parent. And as a short-lived parent myself, I knew from my incorrect training how to do it correctly. And so I had a brief period of time of where I was able to do it correctly. I told you about Clayton the other day, who wanted to draw the perfect circle the first time and couldn't. He's no Mozart. <laughs> and so as his father, he comes to me ask for help to draw it perfectly. He's not able to communicate. He's like one and a half years old. <laughs> and so I take him by the hand and with the writing device, the utensil, whatever it was, pen, pencil, crayon, hold him over the paper and we just do spirals learning the circular motion. And he thought that was more fun than drawing the perfect circle the first time. Mission accomplished. 
best dad in the universe. And so that was easy to do, to train him in the way that he should go, to learn to practice <clears throat> the techniques and then over the course of time you become the expert in drawing a circle and apparently he didn't go on to make that a career I guess my short-lived parenting didn't work his mother corrupted him But yeah, my kids were not raised up by me. So whoever they are now is a consequence of what their mother trained them to become. And the manner in which she treated me with not having me in their lives left that impression on my kids. And so it's clear that they want nothing to do with me and so what she had done to them resulted in them not wanting contact with me these are basic gospel principles of learning knowledge the scientific process of agronomy that's all over the place in scriptures science in scriptures so why the hell is Christianity anti-science? Because you gotta start with the seed, and yes, men have seed. They plant it in a woman, produce the baby. And so, if it's a good seed, as long as it's not thorny, rocky, or whorish soil, drunken luscious or, or, or diseased or <sighs> smoker druggy soil the baby should be able to grow up normal without problems show that it was a good seed <clears throat> nonetheless Apparently, nobody wants to use that pattern into obtaining knowledge. At least Christians, thus Mormons, who claim to be Christian, despite the Book of Mormon saying we're supposed to be Jewish. And so, yes, these kinds of things I'm picking up on as a kid. I'm being told to behave and conform and comply to a behavioral standard and value when I'm reading that that's Lucifer's plan of happiness to take away my agency and they tell me oh no you're free to choose my way or the highway kid I don't think I'm free to choose if it's just a false dichotomy dad who taught you false dichotomy <laughs> Uh, you did because you took the bait <laughs> yeah I was outsmarting my parents as a kid knowing <clears throat> that certain things were just not right and couple it with my associative memory realizing that memorization is a waste of time because that's the pattern of school you show up at class the first day teacher loads you with a whole bunch of books for your backpack that are too heavy for you to carry and you're supposed to memorize the information in the textbooks so that you can regurgitate it on a test that seems stupid when you go to class and the teacher is merely reading from the textbooks it seems like a waste of time I'm not learning anything applicable for my life you know K 
kindergarten and first grade fine you know I learned the basics in kindergarten and so that I learned how to compose a publication in, in first grade great I'm on a great start and then everything tanked and so yeah I, our national public school systems are teaching us to be robotic sources of information to run as contestants on Jeopardy. That's it, that's all. And so if we want to succeed in life, we need to get on Jeopardy and win, like that Mormon kid. Perfect example. And so yeah, my brother, because of his vision problems as a kid, he wasn't able to see in 3D. He can only see in two dimensions. And so, uh, instead of going into sports, he spent his time in the dictionary and the encyclopedias memorizing things. And so he became the valedictorian in high school, the same as the one a uh, girl whose college said, no, we're not letting you speak this hate over the pulpit of our university. <laughs> and then everybody's upset. Oh, you denied her her freedom of speech. No, she's a terrorist. She's promoting terrorism. What the hell did you give her a graduation for when you should have expelled her from the school? <sighs> anyway... She was raised as a terrorist, as Islamic. Hello? Do you not know their religion? Do you not know their founding? And do you not know their founder who replaced the Jews in his own special way than Constantine replaced the Jews? <sighs> Better keep it down. We still have 30 minutes before I can then be louder. <laughs> But yeah, it's annoying that people refuse to learn history. People refuse to learn the source origin of things. That like Muhammad, starting his missionary life, was converting by the false dichotomy. Join or you die and I burn your village. This is Islam. Generation after generation after generation, just like Christians, generation after generation after generation, just like Mormons, generation after generation after generation get taught these same principles. And so now you've got a situation where people are uh, sleeper cells. You know, the average Mormon is a sleeper cell. You don't know what's going on in their thoughts until they are put into a situation that you can determine what is actually going on in their brain functioning. And this is the trap that I noticed when I finally moved to Utah in August of 1996. I had my preconceived expectations of how Mormons should be and behave <clears throat> and was not only surprised that I was wrong, <laughs> but I was horrified and how wrong I was because I'm in the minds of Mormons I am seeing the evil being displayed from their mouths and in their actions the way they treat other people and I'm going I thought I got away from my family and yet, yeah, sure enough, the whole church is just like my parents. <sighs> I 
all designed to force other people to conform and comply to their behavioral conditioning or you're now the enemy and they've got to force you it's an extortion threat for behavioral manipulation and so yes I see exactly why the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints has united with psychology for family services and using it as a weapon and thus Hildebrandt is now in prison and that other asylum is now shut down I see exactly what's going on here this is the evil that was planted by the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints not Joseph not the Book of Mormon not the Doctrine and Covenants or any of Joseph Smith's works by Brigham Young and his abomination as I would come to find out when the church finally published the Joseph Smith papers it's all right there for you Mormons just have to cast aside Christianity and this is the evil you've heard the story and it's Benjamin Franklin Johnson who moves his family to Adam on Diamond full Danite Mormons and he's arrested immediately and threatened deny the church of Joseph Smith deny the Book of Mormon and join us and so then we only hear he did not deny his testimony of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints yeah he conformed he caved to the threats and became a Danite an enemy of Joseph Smith that would go on to have him murdered taking his religion and replacing it with Christianity this is the evil of Mormons anybody pay attention to the theme songs in the description below that I did yesterday with that subject ACDC inject the venom yeah in this particular case it's a behavioral seed that gets planted by parents into the kids and it was only the scriptures with the addition of the Book of Mormon and Joseph Smith's triple that I was able to counteract the poisonous seed of behavioral control of my parents and the church the church was a little more complicated because the church were using the scriptures with their twisted interpretation of it Christian remember not Jewish and so that took some more intense studying and research on the subject matter to eventually come to realize that it's not that the prophets are not as smart as I am they're pure evil and I I'm horrified at how Brigham Young and this church as a consequence have been violating every precept of the Book of Mormon and Joseph Smith everything there's not a single thing that they are adhering to and they tell us that we're supposed to adhere to the scriptures horrifying that such evil is leading this people and so as a child growing up in Southern California my peers are listening to Sean Hannity and Rush Limbaugh on the radio and I am horrified as a kid about what's coming out of my peers mouths that they are getting from Rush Limbaugh and Sean Hannity what they want to do to women 
what they want to do to gays. Because there were no transsexuals and, well, it was only L and G back then. There was no BTQIAPO pluses. They weren't created by psychologists yet. And so, yeah, the new rules of Bill Maher last night, this is where this is all coming from. <laughs> and I was horrified. I thought that the story time uh, hour by the drag queens was a perfectly harmless activity. You know, you, you have these adult men dressing like women, putting on clown makeup going and entertaining little children reading popular books you know like are you my mother where the red fern grows I, I all everything I learned I learned in kindergarten I, and stuff like that harmless books cat in the hat you know for kids nope apparently they're reading I'm denying science, and I want you to deny science and accept us for denying science. Um, okay, all of a sudden this turned into a scary and horror, horror show nightmare. So now I understand why MAGA is freaking out and banning books and school libraries. Because if you're teaching kids to deny science, and again, for anybody who's confused on this, seed, egg, baby. There is no other way. I have avoided this discussion with LGBTQ, IAPO+. You are not my intended audience. Mormons are. Just like I don't get into government discussions. Because Mormonism is. But when Mormonism spills out into these other subject matters, I need to talk about them. And so, as I saw Utah and the rest of the nation begin to accept with driver's licenses and birth certificates those who are LGBTQIAPO plus and the government is keeping a documented listing of people's identities I am doing the warning voice about you've forgotten Nazi Germany This MAGA are neo-Nazis. They are setting this up. They are setting you up to murder you. All this distraction of banning your books and, and banning drag time story hour, that's a distraction of their final solution for you. They're presenting the causation so that they can then punish you when they get things in checkmate. This election, by the way, in case you're wondering. And women. Oh my God, women. Your lives are in great jeopardy. You, of all people, know of the evils that are being done to you. And you've had the Handmaid's Tale. Mormons don't know about it because that's evil. Because <laughs> it's R-rated, but it's not R-rated because it's on a TV series on cable. <laughs> and the prophets haven't come out and declared whether we can or can't watch those. <laughs> like they did for The Sopranos. Stay away! Don't learn about the Sopranos! No! 
Section 119 has nothing to do with Tony Soprano's operation. We're a religion, not a sanitation department. <laughs> nothing the same. Nothing to see here. Move along. All is well in Zion. Keep paying. <laughs> the bishops aren't the bagmen. The deacons aren't the... <laughs> <laughs> leg breakers. <laughs> and so, yeah, Mormons don't see it because they don't learn about it. <clears throat> and so, yeah, this is why I'm giving the warning voice to Mormons. Even though the warning voice is for the whole world. The 14th Amendment, Section 1, already gave women and LGBTQIAPO plus freedoms equal to white supremacist men. It's just that white supremacist men are violating the rights of others. And they claim that that's their, their freedom. We are free to to bully other people, freedom of speech. We have the right to bully this person and threaten them to give us their money and conform and comply to our behavioral control for them. Our freedom of speech, you cannot take it away. It's criminal. You're denying them their freedom of speech, freedom of expression. It's real easy to figure out but you get dumbass press people who are confused. Oh no, they do have the freedom of speech. What do we do? <laughs> we have to give them their freedom of speech, but they're overthrowing the government. They're murdering people. What do we do? They have the freedom. Oh, they're fascists. They're just like Hitler. And they're running for president. What do we do? We have no choice. We have to let them run and let the people decide who to vote for. Oh no, what do we do? <laughs> My God. <sighs> we are in such big trouble. Because of the stupidity of people. <sighs> Apparently they've never read the Constitution purposely don't want you to know that it's in the Constitution to lock all these people up. But all of these people, adults, who are causing the problems were the same people that I knew as peers in grade school back in Southern California listening to Sean Hannity and Rush Limbaugh on how to treat women, how to treat gays, Treatment of gays is different than lesbians. In case you didn't know. They were okay with lesbians for some reason. But gays? Oh, hell no. <laughs> There's a, a, a massive polarized distance of how they wanted to treat lesbians versus gays. Wild. Still abusive, but different. Dear God, but uh, yeah, it's just a nightmare as a kid, literally. I found comfort in the horror movies. <laughs> After being exposed to my peers in grade school. <sighs> yeah, Friday the 13th. Nightmare on Elm Street, those were brilliantly written, at least in the beginning. I'm kind of concerned about Friday the 13th with uh, the last couple. You know, the final one, okay, but the second to last one that they did the other year, what the hell? <laughs> we need to give him his religious, or we need to give him his freedom. He's human, just like us. 
We can't stoop to his level. <laughs> what are you doing? Stop. <laughs> oh no, look at the town. <laughs> oh my god. Psychology is the enemy of the people. <sighs> Dear God. And so, yeah, I, Star Trek Next Generation of porn is all about psychology, and yeah, they're getting sexual in their shows. You know, so I saw the episode yesterday where Deanna Troy is raped by a space energy and is impregnated because the energy wanted to know what it was like to be human. And, and all the guys are discussing what to do as to whether or not this is a, a threat to the enterprise's security and, and aborting the baby and terminating the pregnancy and, and blah blah blah. And she's just sitting there in a zone state, not even listening to any of them. She's just been raped. And all the guys are talking about how to control her body. <laughs> and eventually she blurts out and says, I'm keeping my baby. Just like Madonna. <laughs> Captain Picard, don't preach. <laughs> I mean, double. And then, yeah, another episode, uh, a young couple has sex, and this is a spoiler alert in case you haven't seen the episode. <laughs> the woman is upset with the guy that knocked her up, and so she tells her father that it was some other guy who knocked her up. And so the other guy is taken aboard the Enterprise, and he's a smoozer. I don't understand women. I don't get it. But he's having sex with all of the female crew. And so when the, the, the two uh, people, leaders, are demanding that this guy be brought in to their custody for punishment, you know, it's assumed that he had impregnated the woman of the one tribe. But, uh, yeah, in the end, the woman was just blaming him rather than the other guy that knocked her up. Oh, my God. Drama, drama, drama. I don't understand women. I don't. If I wanted to. I I know their patterns. Sorry, women. You need to run and hide. I will figure it out. It'll just take me just a month to figure it out, and I've got gotcha. you. <laughs> That's what happens when you're using science rather than abstinence only. And, yeah, it's something that should be communicated, but is not. Sex ed. Dear God. Why? It's what we do. And yet, religion says it's evil. And it needs to be controlled. And you have to pay the prostitution price to the church so that you can marry the cute little honey bunny you want to knock up, but you can't touch her until after you're sealed in the temple and paid the full prostitution price for her. And then you continue to pay the prostitution price for her as your wife. And you are now required to pay a higher prostitution price in order to care for her and all of the little babies you're supposed to be producing. 
Now again, stay away from Tony Soprano. <laughs> don't watch how that operation runs. No, don't do it. Don't do it. <laughs> You'll become apostate. You'll leave the church. Don't do it. <laughs> Women are born. Exactly. Oh my hell. This church, rather than teach you the truth about science, about our human biological processes for the perpetuation of the species, which is in the Book of Mormon and all scriptures. But, you know, Spencer W. Kimball said he stapled shut his Song of Solomon. There's nothing inspired in any of that. It's evil. Oh my God. It is incredibly inspiring. And thus why I've been telling you, women are the map to Zion. The Songs of Solomon are going over the map to Zion, New Jerusalem, Salem, Peace, Solomon, Solemn. Peace, N, suffix determinative, King, King of Peace, Salem. <sighs> so sad. And so, yes, the church is maliciously, viciously destroying your brains in regards to the sexes and so boys grow up being told no your natural process is evil you're a sinner you need to go talk to your bishop in graphic detail about your thinking processes and where you're touching yourself and so boys are compromised to be controlled by the priesthood and girls, oh, boys are capable of just turning it off. <laughs> okay. And then they marry you or date you. And they assume you can just turn it off. And then what are you doing? No, we need to wait until after we're sealed in the temple. then you can marry her and then she thinks yeah okay I let you do it and so now we're gonna wait for years before I let you do it again <sighs> because the woman thinks the guy can just turn it off <sighs> and so marriages are destroyed Tim Ballard yeah, those women were consenting. And then, oh no, an apostle of the Lord Jesus is involved. We need to protect them. All of a sudden, it's no longer consensual. I mean, yeah, he was cheating on his wife, but... <laughs> it's adultery rather than rape so what's going on with that case anyway <sighs> last I heard Ballard had been supplying Tim Ballard with rich people's tithing lists to contact them and then he died what happened there so yes, my childhood peers are now the adults that are destroying this nation. The Mormons of my age are now the adults who are overthrowing the government, destroying this nation. They were raised up in the way that they should be. They were 
trained. They are the Neo Danites. And all hell's breaking loose. Da 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 da